Look how cool that is already. All right, we are gonna make this happen today because I didn't feel like working yesterday. I have one day to get this project done. Welcome back. I have kind of an exciting project today. As I may or may not have said on this channel before, I am starting to just dip my toe into cosplay stuff. And while I have no actual reasoning to want to make these, I think it would be really cool to have a set of bracers, specifically leather bracers. I don't think anybody's gonna be surprised by that. And I have an entire ton of leather scraps that I need to do something with. Also, I have these little like punches that I found at one of those Amazon return store things. There were a set of three of them and I think I got them for a dollar or something. So I think what will be really cool is trying to make a bracer with kind of dragon scales, fish scales, something like that. As eloquently put as that was, what we're gonna do today, I am going to get my leather scraps, figure out if I have any pieces big enough to actually make some bracers, come up with a pattern, and punch out some scales. I think it's gonna be really, really cool, but I'm worried about getting it done in a day. Let's get all my leather scraps that I have, get them together, and kind of come up with a game plan. This is not all of the scraps. Check this out. That's most of them. So here's what I think I'm going to need. I'm gonna need a piece big enough to make the base of it, I guess. So something that's big enough that's gonna go on my forearm. And maybe that has a little bit of structural integrity. I don't necessarily need something that's this floppy. So I'll find a base for it, and then I need to decide what color I want the scales to be. Because I've got all kinds of colors in here, and I think I just need to decide what I want that to look like. So I'll go through here, see if there's any scraps. Actually, no, should probably start with a pattern. Let's do that. That way I know what size I'm looking for. Let's draw that out. I want my bracer to go from just above the break in my wrist, so I don't want it to be inside this break because I think it'll get irritated. So just above the break to just below the elbow. So I need this measurement, and then I need this measurement, and then I need this one. And then I'm going to trace those measurements onto just a piece of scrapbook paper. So my forearm measurement is seven inches. And when I measure my wrist, I don't want the overlap measurement. I wanna give myself maybe half an inch difference. That way I can adjust it if I need to, I guess. That didn't make any sense, but this is six inches down here. So we'll do six at the wrist, do nine and a half for up here. I'm gonna measure the widest point first. Like I said, my upper arm is nine. It's gonna be nine and a half. And then what's half of nine and a half? Four and a half, would it be four and a quarter? Four and three quarters? Yeah, that sounds right. And then I need it to go down seven inches. Go down seven. And then down here is six inches. So now that I have kind of this weird eye, I'm gonna connect the corners. So I'll connect this corner to down here and here to here. And that will give me my bracer. There is my bracer shape. So I have my bracer pattern. Now I need to decide where I want the straps to go so that it closes because it's gonna need some sort of closure. And I think I definitely need one at the bottom and the top, and I think I only wanna do three this time around, but I also think four might look cool. We're gonna try three. So I have my place at the bottom, I have one in the center at three and a half inches, and then I've got one at the top. And this is where my straps will go. So let's find a piece of leather that I can use for this. believe that this is the closest I have to something that will fit this pattern out of all these scraps. So I'm going to actually have to cut a piece, but that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So I have this somewhat used roll of, this is called Nubuck, kind of a natural color. It's got a really matte finish to it. So I think 
when I go to glue stuff down, it'll stick really well on this stuff. So I'm gonna cut out two bracers and then figure out the straps. I kind of just want to jump into making the scales, but I'm gonna cut the bracers first. I just have to make room on my table. Hold those. Good enough. I am not worried about scratches and things on the leather because I'm just gonna cover it in scales. So if you have kind of garbagey leather, maybe this is the right project because you can use the garbagey parts because you're just gonna cover them up. This out. Also, this leather is probably three ounces, I think. It's got plenty of pliability, but it also, it's not super soft. I would call this maybe like a medium temper. That's what I'm using for all of this. When I talked about the punches that I bought at the Amazon return thing, these are what I got. So they came in three different sizes and this is the punch that you get from it. So for the sake of this project, I'm gonna use the medium size one. I think the scale for this is gonna turn out pretty well. This would take me my entire lifetime to do, so I'm gonna hold off on that. And I just feel like this is too big. I think the scale is too much. But if I were to do maybe like a chest piece or something, I think the bigger one might be kind of cool. We're gonna go with the medium punch and looking at my pile of scraps here, I have a bunch of different colors, but I think I'm gonna go safe, traditional, I don't know, but I, I think I'm gonna go brown. I have a bunch of different browns, so it's gonna not be a uniform color. It's gonna be a lot of different browns and different textures, which I think will be really cool. But someday, if this turns out well, I might do maybe a blue, funky orange I could use, and I also have green, and I think green would look really cool with this. But I think for today, let's go brown. I feel like this is also one of those projects that if you have broken up bits of leather like this where you wouldn't use it for anything, it's the edge of the leather or edge of the hide, this would probably be perfect for it. Buffalo, oil tanned, really waxy pieces, pebbly stuff. Got a good little stack here. So let's take this stuff over to the Arbor Press and start punching. Welcome to my Arbor Press. This is a one ton Arbor Press from Harbor Freight. It is perfectly fine, but it's also perfectly cheap. I think it was maybe a hundred dollars, but I might've gotten it on sale. Let me show you what we're gonna do with this. Where did I put that punch? Uh -huh. You're neat. So I have my stack of leather and what I'm gonna do is one by one, stick this under here and then two, down, ta -da. So we're gonna repeat this about 8,000 times. I have no idea how many of these things I need, so I'm just gonna punch until I get tired and we'll go from there. I have my plethora of scales. I have no idea if this is gonna be enough, but it's a good place to start. The next step is I'm gonna start on the bottom of the bracer. I don't know. I'm gonna just put them in, put them down. But because we want these to overlap, actually I should probably think what direction I want these to go. My original plan was that the scales would like go down. So they're smooth if you pet your arm this way. I'm trying to decide should they go up the arm. Here's the way it works. If you want the scales to go up your arm so that it is smooth this way, then you need to start like this. If you want them to go the opposite way, then you start at the smaller end. I'm gonna have them go up. We're gonna try that and see what happens that way. I am using Barge's rubber cement. You can use any rubber cement that you want. So even if you just go to Michael's and pick some up, you can use that. If you've never used rubber cement before, ventilation, is your best friend. So I need to get some windows open. I'm gonna turn my fan on and hope that I don't get a headache. So I'm gonna lay down the first line and then figure out the spacing and just try to knock it out. I think it's gonna be really cool when it's done. Let's get that done.
once I have the first row down, then I place a couple of extra scales on top of that and measure how far apart I want these lines to be, which turned out to be about half an inch. So I would glue the top half of the scales and about two rows ahead, get the extra scales glued, and then put them down. And really, once I got that going, the process was pretty quick. And I think I had the whole thing covered in probably less than an hour. What takes the most time out of this entire process, I think is punching those stupid scales. But when it was done, it looked pretty damn cool. I trimmed up the edges and then moved on to straps. Ta-da! Look how cool it is! Kind of looks like a bunch of pennies or a roof. It's very stinky, so probably shouldn't hold it next to my face like that. Next thing I need to do is figure out the straps to get it to close. But I'm not exactly sure how I want these to close. Don't think I want full-on buckles because that's annoying. I could do lacing, but with, I don't know, with the PC-ness of it. I don't know if that's the right move. So we're gonna figure that part out and try to get some way to close this. But it looks really cool. I mean, seriously, look at this. Look at how cool that is already. All right, closures. I decided to just use rectangular hooks, uh, squares. I don't really know what these things are called, but I used those made three of them, and then used Chicago screws to just latch the strap basically onto itself. And once I had that done and I riveted down the edges, it was time for the reveal. I completely forgot that I didn't record a wrap up, so I'm trying to get it done before the sun sets and I can't do it anymore. Or I have to delay the video for another day. As far as the ease of this project, it's a fairly easy project to do, especially when you're thinking about like leather crafting and things. But in that ease, it also kind of requires some specialty tools, so it may not be like the most beginner friendly only because you kind of need extra tools to do it. The Arbor Press is probably the biggest one or at least maybe the most expensive one. But anyway, as far as just general ease, you're just measuring and gluing. That's really all you're doing to get these things together. And honestly, look at how cool this is. Along with being a fairly easy project, did I mention how incredibly practical these things are? I mean, washing the windows and vacuuming and just putting stuff away. Who doesn't wanna look cool when they're doing that? I did make one for my husband and for his, I put lacing on his and I actually think that one even looks better than this. I don't mind the straps for this, but it's just not exactly right and the lacing just works. I have so many ideas for this. 
like I said in the video, I have green leather, I have blue leather. So I think that all of that could make some really interesting scales that I'm very excited to try. Also, I think I'm going to make a kit for this and I'm gonna put it on my Kofi site. Coffee site. I need to just pick a pronunciation and stick with that one. I'm going to put it on my coffee site. Speaking of which, if you haven't checked it out yet, I do have my digital box bag pattern over there as well as pre-sale sewing kits. So if you are interested in getting started in leather work, that's a great place to go. I really, really hope that this kind of inspires you to try it yourself. You could make this out of EVA foam if you wanted to. I think it would still turn out really, really cool. But as you guys know, leather kind of has a special place in my heart. So I will make it out of leather. Hopefully you found this entertaining. If you did, give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe because I do stuff like this all the time, including sewing. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.